Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Super Bowl 54. The San Francisco 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs have advanced all the way to the final game of the year in the Super Bowl. Thank you guys so much for all the support on the previous uh, playoff matches. As now, it is time for the final one of the postseason. The Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers going head-to-head -head in Super Bowl 54 and this is going to be a really exciting game. I think that as far as my own personal predictions go, I do think that the Chiefs will end up winning the game. Um, I think my final score prediction was 38 to 24. And I know that's kind of a, a double, a two touchdown uh, victory for Kansas City in my own personal predictions. But I think that the speed and the athletic ability of Kansas City is just going to be too much, especially late game for San Francisco to be able to keep up with. But we'll have to see whether or not I'm right or wrong. But regardless, the Super Bowl Madden simulation is here. And uh, San Francisco ended up losing to the Packers in our previous simulation for the conference title game. So that should be interesting to keep in mind as well. I mean, this team is higher overall. They're 88 overall. Meanwhile, Kansas City's, what, 83, 84? I think they're 83. Um, however, the the talent on the offensive side of the ball for Kansas City is absolutely incredible, and you got to keep that in mind in this football game. But I'm really excited to see what actually ends up happening in in this game. I think this will be a very um, I don't know that it's basically an offense versus a defense showdown because uh, you know Kansas City's offense is just absolutely incredible, and San Francisco is known for their defensive uh, side of the football. Uh, play and I, I gotta say that especially that front four is, is pretty incredible but there is McCole Hardman back ready to receive the kick it looks like Kansas City's powerful offense will take the field and that's going to be kind of a story I guess of the of the game is San Francisco is known for their defense Kansas City's known for their offense so when those two uh when, when this opening drive here it's going to determine a lot in this game, I think. I think that, you know, if we look at it from this standpoint, it's just, it's going to be a very fascinating game, to say the least. But Kansas City is going to get the ball first here in Super Bowl 54. Uh, the 100th season of the NFL, 54 Super Bowls. And Kansas City was in the very first one against Green Bay, but we couldn't get a rematch. And there is Patrick Mahomes. It shows his 2018 stats. I do wish that they would upload... The actual stats, um, I think that would be really cool to be one of the things that they could update every week. Because you, you hear commentary and stuff get updated all the time uh, in Madden, and uh, well as well as the ratings and stuff. So why not be able to put 2019, so when you play these exhibition matches, you can actually see their current um, stat line. I think it would be a really awesome way to do it. But regardless, they're going to hand the ball off. That's very unlike Kansas City. So right off the bat, a little bit weird to say the least. But let's check out Kansas City's offense. One of the most powerful offenses in uh, in the NFL. Well, the most powerful offense in the NFL currently. And probably one of the better offenses we've seen in general in the NFL. I mean, obviously it's not quite at, you know, 2013 Denver Broncos level, but of course that was a offense versus defense Super Bowl and Seattle destroyed them. So, you know, in his if history repeats itself, defense usually wins championships. So you never know. But there's a nice little slant route to Tyreek Hill, I believe. No, that was Robinson. It was hard to see. I thought it said number 10, but it was it's can be difficult to see sometimes. Um, I will say that it's really weird, but in uh, in our franchise mode, it actually skips to the next um, the next play a lot faster. So I have to do a lot more talking um, in this one rather than if you check out the zero overall franchise. Which, by the way, I highly recommend you do. It's been a lot of fun, and I'm probably going to start doing a new franchise mode here soon. Where I'm probably going to take the... Uh, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do. But I'm probably going to do just like a normal franchise mode. Where like I'm 
I am a certain team and I'm going to try and help them to, you know, be good or something. I'm not entirely sure how that's going to go, but if you guys want to leave any suggestions in the comment section, I'd like to see what you guys have in mind for more Madden content, especially now that the regular season and the postseason is about to end here on Sunday. I'm not entirely sure where to go with more Madden content, as there's Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, he's been... Very good at handing the football off lately, but uh, he, he can throw the football when he needs to. And, you know, it's he he's he's done pretty well this season. But I, I know that he, he did say in one of his comments that it's almost a fortunate thing that he got injured last season. Because without that, they wouldn't have got Nick Bosa at number two overall. They wouldn't have been able to grab one of the best players in the draft, if not the best player at least to this point in the draft. And there is a handoff. We're going to see that quite a bit from both, well, from San Francisco. I, I don't know why, you know, the um, the Kansas City Chiefs ended up handing the ball off off the bat. But there's George Kittle. He's going to be a real big factor. Both of these tight ends are two of the best tight ends in the league. And it'll be fascinating to see them, um, you know, stat wise comparison on how that goes. But. Again, if you guys are interested, leave a comment and let me know your thoughts on, you know, what to do for a potentially new franchise. I was thinking of doing like a, um, as Coleman goes for a few yards, about six on that play. But um, I was thinking of doing like a career mode, but uh, I, I recorded a little bit of career mode and I just don't think I like the setup for how career mode would go. Um, so I'm not entirely sure how I would go about doing that. And then for franchise mode, we do have our zero overall franchise that's going on right now. That's been a lot of fun, but I'm not entirely sure if I want to do something else. Um, you know, a lot of people have done like, uh, as that was a fourth down now as a incomplete pass, but a lot of people have done ones where like they take one of the worst quarterbacks in the league and try and make them into a superstar. I think that that's a fascinating one that I could potentially do. Like, you know, take one of the worst quarterbacks that is undrafted and try and build a team and make them a Super Bowl champion. I think that was um, a couple of people have done that particular challenge. Um, but I don't know. I don't know exactly, pardon, what I want to do with that. Um, there's also, like, fantasy drafts, but those can be kind of iffy you know what I mean uh especially because you know it, it resets everyone's contracts and stuff as there's another handoff and taken down for a very very short gain is Williams and here is that powerful front four for uh San Francisco Sheldon Day out of Notre Dame and Dre Greenlaw the rookie has been very very good a couple of rookies on that team and that What's kind of scary if you're another team in the league is, you know, outside of a maybe two or three people on this uh, defense, these guys are really young. Like, M Richard Sherman's obviously getting older, and, you know, there's a couple of other players on this defense that are getting older, but there is a very young core on this San Francisco defense, and that has got to be a bit terrifying, uh, to say the least. At least I think so, and... I don't know, it's going to be interesting to see how this defensive line holds up to Patrick Mahomes as they run the ball in the first two plays. And we saw this a little bit in the uh, Tennessee-Baltimore simulation where they, they threw the ball a lot, which is weird because both of those teams don't throw the ball. See, third and six, and they run the football. Uh, so they ran the football three times. He's got five rushes in the first quarter. That would never happen. We're not going to see that happen in the, in the Super Bowl. I would be shocked. If he got five carries in the first half, let alone in the first quarter, uh, in my opinion. Uh, especially against that front four, like, there's no way they run the football that often. I I, I don't see it happening, but whatever, it, it, Madden says they're going to run the football five times in the first two drives. And I, I think that's kind of BS, but it's 0-0 after about five minutes and two seconds, and that's a bit ridiculous. If you ask me, but Jimmy Garoppolo and San Francisco getting back out onto the field offensively, and I don't know. It's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting game because the Kansas City defense is kind of known for being kind of wishy washy 
allowing a lot of big plays. Um, and San Francisco's offense is, you know, it's there, it exists, but nothing really spectacular out of San Francisco's offense this season as that was very close to being intercepted as I believe this is going to be Kansas City's defense. Yeah, it is. But they, they haven't exactly been, Kansas City hasn't exactly been known for, for being extremely great and outstanding defensively. Obviously, they have a pretty decent secondary, but, you know, outside of Chris Jones, that defensive front is a little bit lackluster. But at the same time, if you look at San Francisco, obviously George Kittle spectacular. Mostart has been playing extremely well from the running back position. But other than that, the play of this offense hasn't exactly been anything renowned. Uh, it's definitely going to leave some question marks as there's another incomplete pass. Garoppolo 0 of 3 to start the game. And I don't know. I, I'm, I'm curious to see exactly how it goes in real life. But I don't see the first 10, 5 minutes going off the board without somebody scoring, especially Kansas City. But... Kansas City's offense, though, as I'm saying that, Kansas City's offense has barely scored in the first quarter in the playoffs. They scored, what, one touchdown and a field goal, right, in all all of their games? I mean, I, well, both of their games. They've only scored a, a field goal in the first game and a touchdown in the second game, and that was it, right, if I remember correctly? So 10 points in the first quarter. But in the second quarter, there was, what, four touchdowns in the first game, and then in the second game, another pretty decent chunk. I think they scored, what, 10? Something like that? So they've scored about 38 to 40 points in the second quarter. And that's that's exactly what is going to be scary for San Francisco. Is This is probably the best second quarter team I've ever seen in my life. Like, that's Patty Mahomes' quarter. It's the second quarter. That's when he plays his best football. So San Francisco is going to have to watch out for that because he has been absolutely incredible in the second quarter. But single back backfield for Kansas City. Are they going to hand the ball off again? They are, and that's, ex again, I, I really wish that play calling was a little bit less random. I feel like a lot of the times that the AI just kind of picks a random play Rather than, I feel like one of the things that would be really nice to have in Madden 21 is better AI. Because if you look at it, like, time management in the last two minutes has been atrocious. You know, when they call timeouts, is systematic. They do it almost at the same time every single time. If they're going on a drive towards the end of the first half, they'll almost always call a timeout with one minute and one second left in the first half. That almost always happens. Uh, on top of that, you've got, like... Kansas City has thrown the ball only a couple times here in the first quarter. That's very unlike Kansas City. Kansas City's a very fast first team. I know it's not the easiest thing to do in the world, but that's something that I would definitely like them to focus on gameplay-wise. As there's a nice little dump pass, and now he's 3-for-3. Three three. Again, only three passes in the first quarter so far, and we're halfway through. So that that's very uncharacteristic of Kansas City. But I will say, one of the biggest points for me is franchise mode. I think that they need, especially relocation. So, they have had the exact same relocation system since Madden 25. In fact, no, since Madden 13, they've had the same. Oh, Tyreek Hill, he's gone. Touchdown. He broke a tackle and he was gone 48 yards and Tyreek Hill is in the end zone and that is going to bring up the score to 6-0. An impressive pass here. Look at that. The Richard Sherman and, and, and Mosley run into each other and, and that's, that's all she wrote. Tyreek Hill is just too fast for anyone to pursue him and... That is going to make the score 7-0 here about half, just over halfway through the first quarter. Um, and that's how quickly Kansas City can score in real life. I guess they might have heard me and they're like, oh, well, I guess we got to go and try and score a touchdown here on one play. And they certainly did that. But it's 7 to nothing. Kansas City leads. Not really all that surprising, in my opinion, if they uh, score a touchdown. I mean, the first quarter is definitely not Kansas City's quarter, but we'll see. Regardless, uh, as I was saying, though, about franchise mode, it, relocation, I think, is one thing that they really need to work on. And 
I don't care if you bring back, like, you know how in NHL, I don't know if how many people have played uh, NHL. It's made by the same company, and you've got a lot more options when creating your team. But I feel like if we had a system like 2K, like NBA 2K, that would be absolutely incredible. 2K has by far the best relocation system. Obviously, it's not, you know... You create your own team. You can do pretty much whatever you want, upload logos, all of that stuff. I think that's absolutely incredible. And I feel like that would be amazing. But if you can't do that, give us something new every year, in my opinion. Like, for instance, we've been able to relocate to, like, the same cities for the same teams f for since 2013. That's seven years. We've had the exact same bunch of teams that we can relocate to. Like, they, they added Vegas and St. Louis and didn't even bother to give teams. Because why, you know what I mean? That why, why would they put the effort in? Regardless, Chris Jones gets in on the sack. And Garoppolo tries to do the bootleg, and that's just not going to work against Chris Jones as he gets in there for his first sack of the Super Bowl. Very solid play there as he just bursts by the right guard and... It was pretty much over at that point. As in the shotgun, Jimmy Garoppolo, and he fakes the handoff, and he looks deep downfield, and he's got a man, and he's past the 40 to the 45-yard line just about, and that is Samuel on the catch. But I will say uh, about relocation is that I feel like one of the biggest problems is that we have the exact same teams. I don't want to be able to, you know, move to Toronto and have the Thunderbirds and the Mounties and whatever the other team, the Huskies, every single time. I feel like every year they should, like, switch up the team names or switch up the cities, you know, relocate to Montana or something, you know, or um, Vancouver or Montreal or give us something different. France, give us Paris or something instead of just Ireland, you know, as that's a huge face mask penalty and that's going to be a big chunk of yards. But I, I feel like that is something that they've been very avoidant on for the last seven years since they basically haven't done almost anything to relocation since then. And it bugs the heck out of me because even if you just kept the same teams and like next year they added like five more cities like that would be or, or new team names, you know, for St. Louis, give them three new team team names for Las Vegas. Uh, the Raiders will be there next year. So open up Oakland and then give them new team names and stuff like that. You know what I mean? But. Is that a linebacker? He's just all the way out there. I mean, man coverage, I guess. But he throws out to the running back. And out. that was pretty solid coverage. Good play there. And that is going to bring up second down and 10. I do apologize for going on that little rant. But I felt like this was a good opportunity. It's the last, um, the last major event here, the, the Super Bowl, to talk about Madden as a whole. Because six months from now, when the new game comes out, it's going to be, uh, I, I just got a lot of hope that, that we could get something new that we haven't gotten. And that was almost intercepted. Very dangerous pass by Jimmy Garoppolo. But again, speaking of this, I hope you guys do enjoy. If you guys have, make sure you guys hit that like button. I hope you guys, um, you know, can leave a comment as well. Let me know your thoughts um, and let me know what you guys want to see from the channel. And if you guys haven't already, check out my other series, my zero overall franchise mode, where we're trying to take a zero overall team and make them into the Super Bowl champions as that one's intercepted by Breland at the four yard line. And Kansas City takes over up seven to nothing. A huge interception there keeps San Francisco off the board and a bad pass there. And that's what you got to wonder about as both feet are clearly in bounds. In fact, I'm sure he got like three, uh, <laughs> three feet in bounds there as now in the I formation comes Kansas City. I feel like this is where they break out a big play like they try and go deep instead of just running the ball safely for a yard with Williams. I feel like they'd be... They'd be that team that's at their own four-yard line and they're like going to run four verticals with Tyreek Hill and hope that they have man coverage or something. 
But regardless, it's second and nine from their own five-yard line as Kansas City tries to uh, make something happen here. And they, they have four receivers out wide, and he's stepping back. He throws, and he's got Watkins for about yeah, a few yards up to the 12. So that's going to bring up third down and three as seven yards, well, six. They counted as seven yards, but he, he it was second and nine, so six also. Not entirely sure how that works, but regardless, a single back backfield for Kansas City, three yards away. I mean, that's more closely the two yards, in my opinion, but regardless. Patty Mahomes throws, and he catches it. That's Watkins again, and Patty Mahomes is six for six from the field, and that that is what's hard about this uh, this game, is that 99 overall quarterbacks can be a bit terrifying, to say the least. As now a single back backfield for Kansas City. And Patrick Mahomes hands the football off. And breaking a tackle is the running back who takes it past the 30 to the 31. And that's Williams again. Another big play. As he gets it to the outside for a big chunk of yards. Alexander in on the tackle there for San Francisco as a really solid play there and time continues to tick down. Shotgun for Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City from the their own 31 yard line. He's sending out the running back out wide. Like way, really wide and honestly the running back had a lot of space. I probably would have went to him as quickly as possible but instead they go to Watkins and he brings it to second and inches for about nine and a half yards. And that is going to bring us uh, inside of two minutes in the first quarter as Patrick Mahomes and Kansas City are driving. And they hand the ball off again and he gets just enough to get the first down. So Williams gets it again. Buckner was there on the tackle, but he couldn't tackle him before he got past the first down marker. And now Patrick Mahomes and Kansas City line up from the 42-yard line once again in shotgun. We're starting to see, uh, you know, I still think they run the ball a little too much. But regardless, they, they are passing the football quite a bit. As the, Now an empty for Patrick Mahomes. He throws it over the middle to Sammy Watkins and... The drag route is just such a hard route to cover, especially in Madden. And now he's 8 for 8 to start the Super Bowl. And that is something I would not be surprised to see Patrick Mahomes do. Is start 8 for 8 in the Super Bowl as he gets Watkins over the middle to the 49-yard line. And now in the shotgun, only 3 yards away from the first down marker. As they hand the football off again and he gets past the 50 to the 45 and another first down for Kansas City. As the Chiefs are ready up 7-0 to zero and now under 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. Will they run another play or will they just let the clock run out? That is the question. Five seconds. And they do snap it at one. He throws to the outside. He's got his receiver for five yards and that is going to end the first quarter. As it is 7-0 Kansas City, something that could very well happen at the end of the first quarter. Though I, I would be surprised if San Francisco didn't score at all on Kansas City's moderately average defense. But you never know, they do have a moderately average offense, so it's pretty much fair game at that point. But we'll have to see, regardless, Kansas City's driving to try and go up by two scores, even if they kick a field goal here, as Patrick Mahomes now in the shotgun. Stepping back, looking, has time, he throws, and he's got a receiver, and that is Tyree Kill for a short gain of about three. Third and three from the 37-yard line, and that is going to be, this is going to be a big third down, because I still, I'm not entirely sure I trust the kicker to make a kick this deep. As they line up in the I formation, no receivers out wide. But he fakes the handoff, looking, has a target, and he's got a tight end out past the 25 to the 24-yard line as he's made 11 consecutive passes. And that is going to be Yelder 
for 14 yards. In fact, we haven't seen much of Travis Kelsey in this game to this point as uh, San Francisco's defense has been able to shut him out of the game for the most part. And now handing the football off, it is once again to Williams for a short gain. And that is his 11th carry of the first half. And that is probably a lot more than he would actually get. But we'll see. I'm not entirely sure. I could be wrong there. But in the first two games of the playoffs, he hasn't really gotten a whole heck of a lot of carries early game. Patty, Patty Mahomes has led the team in rushing the last two games, basically. And at least through the first half. And past the 10, inside of the 8 is Williams. Another big run there. As the Kansas City's offensive line has done a pretty good job of holding back San Francisco's powerful defensive front. And that is going to be very important. If they can do that, Kansas City has, you know, no chance to lose, in my opinion. If they can stop Nick Bosa and this powerful defensive line for San Francisco, there, there's no way. There's no way. If they can't, if they can, if they can body those guys on the defensive line like it's nothing, this could be a very dangerous situation for San Francisco. But regardless, down to the five, it is second down and goal for Kansas City. An opportunity here to go up 14 to nothing if they can score on these next two plays. Travis Kelsey in motion. And they hand the ball off here and he gets stuffed. No gain and that is going to bring up third and goal. As Armstead in on the tackle. And that's something that you'll probably see if, if Kansas City tries to run the ball like that. That's what I would expect to happen nine times out of ten but in this simulation he's been able to run the ball quite a bit and get some yards shotgun for kansas city stepping back is mahomes throws and he's got a man it's tyreek hill touchdown chiefs and just like that the kansas city chiefs one of their longer drives that they have of the postseason but they get in the end zone and they put up 13 pending the extra point for 14 to zero and if San Francisco cannot score, this is Patty Malms' quarter. This is where your offense for San Francisco has to be able to score points. You cannot trust your team to win if you can't score points in the second quarter. They drew a, the, You just allowed a 97-yard drive, and that is something that you're going to have to deal with. The Over 50% of the time, the Chiefs will score points if they start the drive inside their own 10-yard line. That is a stat they talked about in the um, in the game against the Titans for the AFC title. Kansas City is one of the best teams in the league offensively. And statistically, if you put them in a worse position, they have one of the best offenses in the league from there. Over 50% of the time, if they have the ball inside their own 10, they will score points. And that is just an incredible statistic. One of the best in the league. Uh, actually the best in the league from that statistical category. But there's Garoppolo, an interception, 3 for 8, 48, 46 yards. And that is what a lot of people are, uh, tend to be worried about because he has been handing the ball off a lot in these previous games against the Packers and, and whatnot and against the Vikings where the running back, Mostart, and the rest of this offensive line has had to do a lot more work than Jimmy Garoppolo. And, I mean... I know he's capable of doing well, but uh, it is a little bit scary that he hasn't been able to do it most of the postseason. And that one was almost intercepted by the Honey Badger Tyron Matthew, as that could have been his second interception of the first half. And that would have been very detrimental to San Francisco. But this is about... Uh, I mean, I don't expect San Francisco to score zero points at this point in the game, but I... I do expect Kansas City to win this game by about that much. I think Kansas City is a really talented team offensively, and I think that San Francisco's defense is going to have their biggest challenge of the season. And to me, if I look at this San Francisco team, I don't think they're well-rounded enough offensively to keep up with what Kansas City's going to try and do in this Super Bowl. And I think it's going to be a good game. Until the fourth quarter. That's that's what I think. I think in the fourth quarter, Kansas City breaks away. San Francisco makes a couple of major mistakes. And Kansas City wins it 38-24. But 
That's just my prediction, and I very well could be wrong as Sorensen gets the tackle there, but it's not until after the first down marker as Greg Kittle is just such a talented tight end. You want to get the ball into his, his hands if you're Jimmy Garoppolo. He is definitely one of the most talented players on your team, 100%. And there is the handoff, and he gets stuffed in the backfield. And that is going to be counted as no gain, but he just got absolutely blasted by Wilson. And that is going to bring up second down and 10. Kansas City's defense has played well in this game, but I think that there's just not enough offensively for San Francisco to really put them over the top here. And that is going to be the biggest challenge from this team. But a, a decent run there by Coleman. I think that this NFL draft is also going to be very interesting as, you know, there are a lot, there are a lot of uh, question marks that are going to be, you know, need to be answered. But I think free agency coming first, that is going to be fascinating to see, you know, who gets the big contracts and who doesn't. But offset eye formation for Jimmy Garoppolo and... They do, in fact, get the first down. So San Francisco is starting to drive a little bit there. First and 10 for San Francisco here. But I'm curious, uh, while you guys are down in the comment section commenting on what you guys want to see from me, Madden-wise, um, why don't you let me know what your bold prediction is for this offseason? What do you think is going to happen that you that you would think most people don't expect. You know, maybe like Tom Brady, instead of, you know, returning to New England or going to Vegas, maybe he signs somewhere else. Maybe you have, like, some bold prediction on that. Or, you know, somebody doesn't get re-signed or someone gets cut that no one would expect. What do you guys think is a really bold prediction Oh, that is a big hit, and he can't quite keep the ball in his hands third and six. But what what do you guys have as a really bold prediction for this postseason? You know, free agency, the draft, somebody takes someone, you know, maybe you think that, I don't know, Tua goes second pick, I don't know. Something that you guys would think no one would see coming. As there's a nice little dump pass over, and he gets about 11 yards on that one. A decent play there, and that is going to bring up another first and 10 as Coleman gets the play. So that was a nice little pitch and catch there from San Francisco. A nice juke move as he just blasted whoever that was off the screen. And the shotgun once again is Jimmy G. Garoppolo hands the ball off to Coleman, and he takes it for a very short two-yard gain, and that's going to bring up second down and eight. Ward came in on the tackle, and Kansas City looking to try their first Super Bowl in just about 50 years. It's been a very long time since Kansas City made it to the Super Bowl, and they're or, yeah, and they're looking to try and uh, make something happen here as a handoff for. Uh, Breda, and that was a very short gain of negative one yards as Nanandi got the tackle there. And I will say that, you know, this is a battle as Kansas City looks for, what, its second ring, and San Francisco is looking for their sixth. That would be a very big win for San Francisco to tie the Steelers and Patriots for most Super Bowls, and that one was... I was te I was thinking that one was going to be picked off, but that's going to bring up fourth and nine. So after all of that driving, San Francisco's left with a very tough situation on fourth and long, and they're going to have to probably try a field goal here. Down. Oh, they're going to punt. I mean, they are just too far away from that field goal range, and so they are going to punt the ball away, and it goes. it's a beautiful punt, and it's out at the one. However, 50%, I mean, they scored from their own, what, three-yard line last time. So this is not, or from their own four-yard line last time. So this is not unventured territory for Kansas City. However, Kansas City, 50% of the time, scores points when starting drives inside their own 10. 
that should mean that this will not end up leading to points because they did last time. But that's just a statistic. As we are under six minutes to go in the first half, 14-0, and Kansas City has a shot to make it even more. If they can make something happen here, they hand the ball off and he gets stuffed. And the ball will be spotted at the five-yard line, third down and seven. Buckner on the tackle, that's his third. And Kansas City, I think they should pass the ball here, but I don't know if the AI will actually throw the football here. As there's a single back backfield with three receivers. Tyreek Hill in motion. They do the end around and he is stuffed. And that is going to go nowhere. And that's going to bring up fourth down and seven. Not a very good play design at all whatsoever. Uh, I don't know why you'd run that kind of a play when you need, you know, seven yards. But this is what I'm talking about when I was when I was talking earlier um, on, you know, exactly what I think Madden 21 should have and the importance of it. And that is a beautiful punt inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. Very solid punt there from his own end zone. But I just think that it's a little disappointing to see stuff like that happen when you're talking about the AI. A lot of people can win football games because the AI is stupid. Like if they set the, you know, if they have 99 kick power, they automatically set up their kicker from like a 60 yard field goal or, or longer every drive that they get into that kind of range. And I think that that's a little stupid because that would never happen. Um, and I think that that takes a little bit of the immersion out of the game as that is a short six yard play from San Francisco as the Honey Badger in on the tackle and about four minutes to go here in the first half of play and San Francisco's offense has not been able to get very much going but when they have they still ended up having to punt after after a long drive and that could happen again here potentially as another short pass gets them a what a yard or so third and three to the 21 as Coleman catches his third ball Hitchens in on the tackle and Garoppolo set up with a third and three you got to be able to make a big play here single back backfield for San Fran and they hand the football off and he takes it just past the 25 to the 26 yard line for a first down and that is going to bring up a first and 10 for San Francisco with just under three minutes to go here in the first half. You got another couple of plays before the two-minute warning here. Offset eye formation for San Francisco. And they hand the football off to Coleman, and he takes it for about three yards, second and seven. Under two and a half. This could be the last play. Assuming they get a playoff, this could be the last play of the first half. On second down and seven. And I will say that if San Francisco's offense looks like this, there's no way that they're winning this game. Because Kansas City can really mess you up in the second quarter. As no, they will not get a playoff. And that they're going to let it go to the two-minute warning. Not a smart decision. And this is what I'm talking about with the AI. There's no reason for you not to get a free timeout here. You run a play before the end of the two-minute warning. You had 30 seconds, and you get another opportunity with the timeout. But instead, they, they miss that opportunity. They don't run a play. And now they have the ball at the 35-yard line for third and two. And they're, again, time management in this game for the AI. This is on all Madden, by the way. All Madden should have the best coaching AI in the entire game. They should have the smartest of moves, but they don't. Uh, they they don't run the the plays that they need to make and it's it's really just incredibly stupid as that one goes and bounces off his arms and is incomplete fourth and two with a minute and a half to go and Kansas City will get the football back so yeah I, that again this is on all Madden and that just happened so it's it's a bit surprising I feel like there should be a little bit more. Um, you know, work with the AI uh, in next year's game. 
So that way, you know, these things don't happen. You know, a lot of the time when I was playing games on All Madden, I could win games because they would attempt a 62-yard field goal because they have a kicker with 99 kick power, and he misses the heck out of it. Or there's wind. They don't they don't even account for the wind. So that there's wind. They they the ball hits at like the 15-yard line on a 60-yard field goal, and then we get the ball inside their territory to start off. Stepping back with Patty Mahomes. Looking is Kansas City. Throwing deep and he's got Tyreek Hill to the 46 and out of bounds. As Patrick Mahomes is 14 for 14 from the field. I believe that's what that said. Tyreek Hill has almost 100 yards receiving in the first half. That is something that I would not find surprising at all. And now in the shotgun is Patrick Mahomes once again. Stepping back, looking, throws. He's got a target, and he takes it to the 43-yard line for a loss of three. Not a very good play there, and the time is going to continue to run down. One minute and one second, like I said earlier. Look at that, a timeout. Every single time. And Kansas City calls timeout with one minute and one second to go in the first half. As they have done in every, uh, every single game I have done, uh, sometimes they'll miss it and go down to one minute, but almost every time it'll be one minute and one second. They'll call their first time out. And now in the shotgun, it's second down and 13 for Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City. Stepping back, looking, has time, throws, and he's got Travis Kelsey past the first down to the 41-yard line. And a timeout by Kansas City again. Once again, bad time management skills. And I, I will admit, though, that the no huddle is a little bit underpowered at this point. Like, it was overpowered because you didn't lose any time, but now you lose too much time. Um, I feel like they, they, they really, it depends on a lot where players are and stuff, but there's no way you should lose 17 seconds when running the hurry up at any given time. But regardless, there's a short five-yard play, and Patrick Mahomes is 17 for 17 to start the Super Bowl. That is absolutely wild. And Kansas City just needs a field goal to go up by 17 going into the locker room, and San Francisco hasn't even scored a point at this time in the game. Under 30 seconds left for Patrick Mahomes. Looking, throws deep downfield, and he's got his man. It's Tyreek Hill inside the five-yard line. And a timeout with 16 seconds. Will they take the points, or will they try for too many? Tyreek Hill has 123 yards receiving in the first half. And that's something that I... I that's going to be so hard to defend even in real life. And Patrick Mahomes is lighting up with that superstar X factor in the shotgun. You cannot take a sack here. And they throw and it is caught. Touchdown Tyreek Hill. And Tyreek Hill gets into the end zone. It's 20 to nothing and pending the extra point for a 21 skunk in the first half. And if, if San Francisco's offense looks like it does in this game... This is just going to happen. And the kick is through the uprights. 21-0. to zero. Kansas City leads with 13 seconds to go in the half. San Francisco does have all three timeouts, but they need a lot of luck to happen on this one. As Tyree Kill and Kansas City uh, posing for the camera there. They have been... It has been all Kansas City all game. And let me tell you, there is Kyle Shanahan and... We all know his Super Bowl history after leading Atlanta's offense uh, to blow a 28-3 lead against the New England Patriots just three years ago. And now his offense can't put anything on the board in general. 21-0. And that is, I mean, that is really rough. Because if you're getting shut out by Kansas City's defense, like Kansas City doesn't have a bad defense but their defense isn't exactly stout either. But regardless, San Francisco hasn't been able to put up even a single point in this game. 21-0. to 
It has been all Kansas City all game long. And that is something that I do worry about in this game. I don't think that San Francisco won't score. But I do feel like Kansas City is going to be able to score at will. They're going to be able to put up a lot of points on the board. Especially in the second quarter. And it is 21-0. And that is going to end the first half. And it has been all Kansas City to this point in the game. If you guys are still watching, I thank you guys so much for all the support that you guys have given in this uh, throughout the entirety of this run in the playoffs. We have done every single playoff game. If you guys want to check out any of the previous ones, you more than well can. But I highly recommend checking out, of course, our zero overall franchise mode where we took a zero overall team with a bunch of 12 overall players and tried to make them into a Super Bowl franchise. Not just a Super Bowl franchise, but a dynasty. A team that can win, you know, five, six, seven Super Bowls in a decade or two. A team that can become the greatest franchise of all time. So I'd highly recommend you check that out as episode five will have gone up probably right before this video has. And... I highly recommend checking that out if you have not done so already. And let me know in the comments section what you guys want to see from future Madden projects. I'm not, I want to do another franchise mode, but I'm not entirely sure if I just want to do a regular one where I'm, I just pick a team and then try and make that team, uh, you know, Super Bowl champions or whatnot. I'm not entirely sure, but there's a short dump pass to Coleman and he takes it out to about the 28 yard line. As that is a decent play there and gets a gets a few yards on that one. In the shotgun now for San Francisco. And they hand the football off and he gets stuffed behind the line of scrimmage. And that's going to bring up third and nine. Terrell Suggs was in on the tackle for loss. And this could be his last game. And he might go out as Super Bowl champion. You know, longtime Baltimore Raven. He has been around the league and coming out of retirement and whatnot. I will say, him getting picked up by Kansas City earlier this year has really helped him out. And Garoppolo going deep. He's got a man. He's got it. And he's gone. Touchdown, San Francisco. What an incredible play as broken coverage. And that is something you might want to worry about when you're talking about the Chiefs defense. And what a beautiful pass and catch for a touchdown. That is probably the most we've seen out of San Francisco in this game. And what a beautiful play as San Francisco gets into the end zone. And it is now 21-6, 7 pending the extra point. As San Francisco's not quite out of this game yet. Uh, they need some defensive stops. They need some big plays. But it's entirely possible to achieve. As 21-7, to Kansas City still leads. But San Francisco's defense hyped on the sidelines. And now an opportunity for them to make a statement against this Kansas City offense in the second half. But you could see the second half adjustments come into play on that one. That was a phenomenal play. And the the actual pass was just incredible. Obviously, he did have to stop and catch the football. But he just got so open on that play that it didn't matter. He still had time to stop, catch the football, and then run away from the defender for a touchdown. And just an incredible ability there. As now the Chiefs return it from the 5-yard line past the 25 to the 27. And that is going to bring up a 1st and 10. As Patrick Mahomes and Kansas City looking to try and become Super Bowl champions. Patty Mahomes still young in his career and an opportunity for him here to make something happen. As now in the shotgun are the Chiefs. And an opportunity here as they fake the handoff. Looking, has time, gets a man, and it is 
counted as incomplete to Tyree Kill. He couldn't get both feet down as he caught it in stride, and that was not enough. Second and 10 as San Francisco's defense needs to make a defensive stop here to, you know, actually give their offense a chance to come back. They hand the football off to Williams, who takes it to the 30. A pretty decent play there, and that is going to bring up third and seven. It's still going to be a very difficult third down to make for Kansas City, but if any team can do it in the entire league, it is definitely the Chiefs. Third down and moderately long. Patty Mahomes steps back. Has time. Has plenty of time. Throws, and he's got a man, and he's out of bounds for a loss of yards. As Patrick Mahomes, 20 for 21 in the Super Bowl. But a fourth down for Kansas City, and that is going to bring up a punting situation. A very bad decision there to throw it to a guy who was just barely in bounds. And that is going to force a punt here. And the punt goes into the end zone for a touchback. So San Francisco, if they can make something happen on this drive, this entire landscape could change dramatically. As San Francisco has an opportunity here to make something happen. Single back backfield for San Francisco. As they look to try and make some sort of a statement here. Bootleg throws to Kittle and he gets it to the 25 for 5. And that is going to bring up of course, that second down and five. Not or that was Dwelly. My apologies. It is. It can be sometimes difficult to see the numbers on the jerseys from far away. As uh, that's going to be in the I formation for San Francisco on second and five. Kittle moves a little bit. A hand the football off. He gets a decent chunk, and Coleman takes it. Takes it past the thirty. To the 31-yard line as Breland in on the tackle. First down and 10 for San Francisco. The second half adjustments have been very effective so far for San Francisco as they try and get back into the game. 21-7 currently. Kansas City leads. As stepping back as Garoppolo throws and he overthrows his receiver. Incomplete. Garoppolo has 10 incompletions in this game and only 11 completions as he's just over 50% uh, throwing the football. Meanwhile, Patty Mahomes has one incompletion in this game so far. And if that's how this game goes, it's going to be very scary for San Francisco, as the score suggests. Looking throws, and he's got Kittle, and Kittle takes it past the 40 to the 43 for another first down for San Francisco. And the 49ers continue to drive here as it is 21 to 7 Kansas City. Now normally it's it's Kansas City taking uh, a huge uh, deficit to overcome. As offset eye formation for San Francisco, they hand the football off to Coleman who takes it to the 47 yard line. So a decent run there for San Francisco as now there is about 10.40 to go here in the third quarter. San Francisco 14 points down in this game, but a touchdown here would make this thing a whole heck of a lot more interesting. As they could try and come back down 21-0. Maybe it would be a little bit of the opposite feeling for Kyle Shanahan to be the one to, to take a 20-plus point deficit and be the one to break it. But a short gain there is going to bring up third and five for San Francisco. Not exactly an easy third down conversion to make from their own 48-yard line as they're going to need a decent chunk of yards here as Garoppolo goes into the shotgun. And he's got time. He throws downfield, and he got his receiver who caught it, but I believe he didn't get his feet down and that is going to bring up fourth and five. A little bit of pushing and shoving after the fact. 
Yeah, he didn't get any feet down, but a, a nice catch nonetheless. And 40, the 49ers will have to punt the football. Uh, another decent drive, but just too far away. And a decent punt there will take it to the 13-yard line for Kansas City as Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs will make their way back out onto the field. And Tyreek Hill has had one heck of a game. He has been so impressive to watch so far. And we'll have to see how things go here in the second half as Patrick Mahomes now in the shotgun. Only one incompletion in this game to this point as there's under 10 to go. They hand the football off on the bad snap, and he takes it for about six yards, second and four. Patrick Mahomes, in his third season, has an opportunity to make one heck of a statement as Super Bowl champions. And a lot of people wonder, with how good this offense is and how many parts there are that are still relatively young, could the Chiefs win multiple Super Bowls? And, I mean, a lot of people have been comparing this team to a potential dynasty. And I, 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 I wonder about it myself. There's still a lot of question marks on that defense. And once you got to pay Patrick Mahomes, once you got to pay Tyreek Hill, once you got to pay Chris Jones, it's going to be a lot more difficult, in my opinion. And you're talking about guys in the early stages of their contracts that still need to get that payday. And there is a big sack by Kawane Alexander. I believe that's the first, yep, the first sack San Francisco's defense has been able to get. And that is the biggest issue, I think. This is one of the best teams when it comes to sacks and pressure on the quarterback. And they haven't been able to get any on Patrick Mahomes to this point until that play. Six-yard loss, second down for Kansas City as they hand the ball off. And he takes it. And it looked like he could have had a big hole, but he only gets four out of it. Third and 11. They're a yard behind the original line of scrimmage is Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City. And again, like I said before, this is going to be a very interesting offseason because they got to pay Patrick Mahomes. And I feel like they probably will, obviously. If they don't, they're stupid. But at the same time... It's going to make things a lot more difficult to re-sign a lot of your better players. But there's a deep pass, and he's got a man. I thought it was intercepted by Richard Sherman as Patrick Mahomes' is second incompletion. And they needed 11, and they went for like 80, but they couldn't get it. And that is going to bring up fourth down. And that Patrick Mahomes, he can fire rockets downfield, can he? As now a punt here for Kansas City and a decent one as he fields it inside the 15, takes it out past the 28, and he was going to go past the 30, but a late hit out of bounds by Kansas City, and that is going to give him 15 yards. Kendall Fuller on the mistake as he hits the receiver out of bounds, and that is going to be a first down from almost midfield. The best starting field position for Kansas or for San Francisco all game. And with under seven minutes to play in the third quarter, San Francisco has a chance to make this a little bit more interesting. Their defense has come to play. The second half adjustments are on. And there's a decent run there. And he takes it for about nine. And that is going to be second and short. Wow, what a what a play and the third quarter San Francisco's adjustments. You got to give credit to Kyle Shanahan for being able to to make some decent adjustments defensively and as well as offensively and put Kansas City in a difficult position here. As now stepping back is Jimmy G. He doesn't have a lot of time but he was able to throw it out to about the 40-yard line and that is going to bring up a first and 10 for San Francisco. Kansas City was in the backfield quickly, but he got it out right on time. And that is going to be a first down for San Francisco in Kansas City territory as they look to try and make something happen here. They need at least a field goal to make this a little bit closer. But they prefer a touchdown, obviously. As Coleman takes it for no gain, and that's going to bring up second down and 10 for San Francisco. Under five and a half now as time continues to tick away. And for Kansas City, I 
I feel like this is a team that has a lot of upside, but you got to wonder how long Andy Reid also has left to coach. I mean, obviously, Patrick Mahomes is a game changer of and in himself, but you, you do kind of want... I feel like, while he is talented, if he did not have Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey on his team, that would make things a lot more difficult for him to be able to make it to the Super Bowl. I mean, those two guys, especially Kelsey in the second half of that or in the second quarter and, and later in that game against Houston, you don't have Travis Kelsey there, you have anybody else, that is going to be a very, very hard game to win. As a very good pass by San Francisco, gives him a big chunk of yards, throws to the outside to another one of his tight ends who takes it for about no gain. And, se oh, they counted as a gain of one, but the yard marker didn't change up at the top. But again, like I said, uh, I... I it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what Kansas City does over the offseason, over the next couple seasons, whether they continue to have this kind of success. Patrick Mahomes did get injured this season, so that is another question mark on whether or not Patrick Mahomes can continue to stay healthy. As there's Coleman up the middle, past the 10 to the 9. Another way is, is just how Patrick Mahomes plays. If you watch him play, he likes to run around a lot, he, he, and sometimes that could lead to taking hits. You know, he's not as much a pocket passer quarterback. He likes to try to run to the outside. He was leading the team in rushing the last two games for a big chunk of those games, including the entire game in the first one. As there's a handoff to Coleman who takes it. I believe that'll count as the first down. They take it to the seven. Yeah, that will be first and goal as Coleman takes another decent run there. But again, I don't know. We'll see how things go. But Kansas City, that team is so talented. You got you have to wonder whether or not they can just ride that momentum and, and get all the way through. That's going to be the big question mark, I think. Handing the ball off, and there's a fumble! A big hit! And after all of that, Coleman fumbles the football inside the 10, and that is going to be a huge mistake. A big hit there. Oh, no. San Francisco had a shot to make this a one-score game. And a big hit jars the ball free. And now the Chiefs will have the ball at the five. Patrick Mahomes in the I formation here as they fake the handoff and they throw the football and he loses two. Very well covered as Sammy Watkins is backed up to his own three-yard line as Armstead in on the tackle. Very good coverage there. As Watkins tried to run the football and do a nice little spin move, but he couldn't really get anything going there. Eye formation once again for Kansas City. Throws to Tyreek Hill, runs backwards, and that's a safety! And that is going to give San Francisco a safety 21-9. And Tyreek Hill, after doing so well in this game, he runs backwards at this point. And Garoppolo and San Francisco will have another shot here to make something happen. And on top of that, if they score a touchdown on this drive... The entire complexion changes because they'll be less than a score away from get, catching up to Kansas City. As the punt goes and is fielded inside the own 10-yard line, and that is going to be a nice juke move, and he takes it out to the 29-yard line. And that is pretty decent field position for San Francisco, as Coleman was not able to hold on to the football last time out. And... I don't know. It's going to be very fascinating to see whether or not this team can hold on to the football this time or how much they'll trust Coleman. But single back for San Francisco. A couple of receivers out wide. They do hand the football off, and Coleman takes it. That's 21 rushes for Coleman. I feel like we would see more Mostart in this game than we have been seeing, but regardless... Second and seven now for San Francisco. As now in the shotgun is Jimmy Garoppolo. 
An opportunity here for San Francisco to make some major statement in this game. He throws. He's got a receiver who takes it past midfield. And a huge play there for a first down as that is the first reception of the game for Emmanuel Sanders. And, you know, from, I bet this guy is thrilled that he got traded from Denver to be on a potential Super Bowl uh, team. Obviously, there's still question marks, but to be playing in the Super Bowl after being on Denver at the start of the season, you got to wonder, you know, what goes through your mind as well as like Terrell Suggs. He was on Arizona, and to see that he is now on a team that could win the Super Bowl, you know, there's so many things that are, are can be so surprising, as well as, you know, how well Mostart has played. It's just fascinating to see these kinds of stories play out. As the clock will run out on the third quarter, I think that's another bad clock management. I feel like San Francisco could have totally... Ran a play there and made it something happen, but now they only have the fourth quarter, and they shut out Kansas City in the third quarter, and that is a huge success. But how long can they do it they're, before their offense just, you know, the, the biggest problem is that Kansas City's not going to be stopped forever, I don't think. It's going to be very hard for you to just shut them out entirely in the second half. You've got to be able to score on this drive and make something happen here to get yourself in a good position. As Garoppolo throws short to the middle of the field, and that is going to be a face mask penalty on the defense. And another first down for San Francisco, a huge mistake by Sorensen, and that is going to put the ball inside the 30-yard line. That is a huge mistake by Kansas City. And Emmanuel Sanders still does get his second catch of the game, but a big, big penalty on Kansas City there. We'll put the ball at the 27-yard line. Is now in the shotgun is Jimmy Garoppolo. And an opportunity here to make something happen. And they hand the football off. He's got a space. A nice hole there for about nine, and that is going to bring up second and short. Coleman now up to 75 yards running as Hitchens had to come in on the tackle at linebacker and... 21 to 9 is the score as time continues to tick away here. I formation now for San Francisco. And they throw the ball to Emmanuel Sanders, who does get the first. No, they'll count it third and inches. That was a good effort, though, by Sanders to try and make something happen as they don't quite get to the first down marker. Third down and very, very short. Now in empty is Garoppolo, a very interesting decision to go into empty here as he throws short, and he's got his receiver, and he breaks a tackle, touchdown, San Francisco! A huge play there, and San Francisco's in the end zone, 21-15. And the extra point away from a five-point game as San Francisco took the dominant first half by Kansas City and they made their own dominant second half to make this a game again. 16-21, to 21, San Francisco is down in this game by just five points and Patrick Mahomes trying to rally his troops on the sideline as it would be fitting that Patrick Mahomes and Kansas City could have had two of the better comebacks of the playoffs against Houston and Tennessee and turned to be the one to get the comeback against them by San Francisco. But San Francisco's obviously got to finish the job here in the last 13 and a half. As now the Kansas City team will return the kick from San Francisco as McCole Hardman could be a difference maker in this game. But he hasn't quite gotten the opportunity so far. As now the kick by San Francisco is deep and McCall Hardman can't get even close to taking it out as the ball will be backed up, you know, well, well deep in the end zone. And now here is Tyree Kill. He has had oh, he has had no production in this third quarter. Three touchdowns though, all three of them that Kansas City has have went to Tyree Kill. He's gotten seven catches for over 120 yards. And he has been a huge factor in this game 
However, in the third quarter, no catches, no yards, and San Francisco now leads 16, or it now uh, has only a five point deficit to overcome. As Bosa got through this, uh, his man, but just barely too late. 11 yards there is Tyree Kill. We were just talking about him. And with perfect timing, he gets an 11-yard catch. His eighth catch for 137 total yards. As he has been a force to be reckoned with. And it's just so hard to defend Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey and McCole Hardman and Sammy Watkins, the fastest team in the NFL. And there is a nice little five-yard pitch and catch there. They'll count it as six, second and four, as Watkins gets his sixth catch. There's so much speed on this Kansas City team, and that's something that a lot of people, you know, when they think about speed, they don't tend to think about success. A lot of people uh, relate speed to college football and how college football doesn't translate to the power of the NFL. And there's a corner blitz, and it was run to perfection. Tart gets the sack. And the corner blitz gets to Patty Mahomes, third and 11. As that was a beautifully designed corner blitz. Look at the timing. Oh, it was fantastic. He didn't have time. Tyree Kill could have caught the ball for a deep play, but not enough time for Patty Mahomes to assess the situation and get the ball out. And there is a nice pitch there and a very well covered Screenplay and fourth down upcoming for Kansas City. Wow, this this game is absolutely wild. A nice tip at the line of scrimmage. Five points separate these two teams. And the way San Francisco has played in the second half, we could see something absolutely crazy happen. As the punt is deep and long. And a nice little hit there as uh, the return will take him to the 19 yard line and they'll have to go 81 yards but even a field goal here could put them in a good situation but again how long can you hold off Kansas City's powerful offense the second half has been absolutely incredible like the way that San Francisco has come out and played in the second half the second half adjustments made by San Francisco you know the coaching strategy has been absolutely incredible to see and hit as he throws, it's deep, and he caught it past the 35, unbelievable, 49 yards, oh my gosh, what a catch, and it's inside the 35 yard line, huge play, look as he's getting hit by Chris Jones, and the ball will be spotted at the 33, shotgun, another pass, and I thought that one was going to be caught too, but it falls innocently to the ground. And this second half for San Francisco has been absolutely insane. Absolutely insane to see San Francisco play with this much ferocity in the second half after such a brutal beatdown in the first two quarters. Jimmy Garoppolo throwing. And he's got a man inside the 10. It's Emmanuel Sanders. And in Sanders, we trust a throwback to my face of the franchise mode. But Emmanuel Sanders catches the football inside the 10 to the 7-yard line with under 11 to go. And San Francisco, a touchdown here would give them the lead. Watch George Kittle. They ran the screen play. But George Kittle, if they would have thrown the ball immediately upon snap, could have potentially gotten into the end zone for a touchdown. But regardless, they're backed up a yard to the eight. So that is going to bring up second down and goal for San Francisco. And a field goal would not be beneficial to them. Once again, George Kittle looks like he's in a pretty good position here. Not exactly the best play call. Chris Jones... Could have had an opportunity to get the sack, but he just barely missed. As this is going to be third and goal. This is a huge play here because if San Francisco kicks a field goal, Kansas City still leads this game. As the score, 21-16. And now in empty comes San Francisco. Stepping back, looking. Has time in the pocket, but not enough. And he catches the ball inside the five to the four, and that is not going to be enough. 
And they've got to play it safe and kick the field goal here as Samuel goes over 100 yards, 101 yards receiving in this game so far for Samuel. And he has been playing his best football. They are going for it. They're risking it all. Oh my gosh, a gutsy play call as Garoppolo throws and he's got it. Touchdown on fourth and goal. Emmanuel Sanders. Unbelievable, San Francisco takes the lead on one of the gutsiest plays you'll ever see. Fourth and goal, and he gets it into the end zone to Emmanuel Sanders. Unbelievable. I can they're going for two. Obviously, once you're up by one, you want to go up by three to get that field goal would still force overtime. Stepping get back is Jimmy Garoppolo. He doesn't have time. He's stripped. And Chris Jones gets the sack. It will not count as a sack on the score sheet because it is a, uh, a two-point conversion. However, a big stop there. And a field goal would still win the game for Kansas City. But that fourth and goal play, I was sure that they were going to play it safe. But the coach, gutsy as ever, goes for it and converts. Is that actually, is that Kyle Shanahan or is it... Uh, John Harbaugh, because the way the Ravens played all season, I feel like that was a, a very John Harbaugh thing to do, to go for it on fourth and goal with that kind of stipulation. They don't make that. That is an entirely huge game changer, but he was so confident. As the kick is away, deep and unreturnable, and that is exactly what you want to see. You want to make sure that McCall Hardman has no chance at returning these kicks and they kick it as far back into the end zone as they possibly can. As Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs come out onto the field. An opportunity now for Patrick Mahomes and Kansas City to make something happen. Shotgun here for KC. Down by one. After an amazing first half, it's not enough. And the pass is a loss of a yard. Second and 11. Man, this, this game is absolutely insane. As Tart gets his sixth tackle, he also has a pick in this game, or a sack in this game. My apologies, not an interception. Patrick Mahomes has been shut out since the second half. Or since the second half start. Sending a man in motion. Second down and 11 here. Patrick Mahomes takes it in the shotgun, stepping back, looking. And that one was almost intercepted. That could have changed the entire course of the game, but it falls to the ground in third and 11 with under eight and a half to go in the final quarter of play. This game has been absolutely insane. I thought that Kansas City had it won, but the second half completely dominated by San Francisco. Looking has time. He's got sacked, it's Buckner. And San Francisco's third sack, and again, the way that they have played here in the second half is absolutely incredible. I feel like it's almost a storybook ending that Kansas City, after being down 24-0 against Houston, after being down by, what, 16 to Tennessee, that they would lead by 21 to start this game. They would actually come to play in the first half, and they would be the one to give up the lead as San Francisco leads by one and now has the football with under eight minutes to go in this football game the game is not over yet Kansas City could still win but I'm I'm just saying this is a this would be one heck of a story to have that happen as now in empty comes San Francisco he throws he's got Kittle who takes it for about six yards to the 40-yard line. A decent pitch and catch there is Jones in the zone here. And you've got to wor worry about Chris Jones coming in to get another sack. And he almost got to the quarterback on that play. As now, after a six-yard gain, it's going to be second down and four. San Francisco has two yards away from 400 yards of offense. This is more of along the lines of what I expected to see them do against Kansas City's defense. But to think... San Francisco's defense would be the story here in the second half as well. 
as Emmanuel Sanders picks up the first down and the clock continues to run under seven minutes. Jimmy Garoppolo has 343 yards of passing offense in this game. Emmanuel Sanders, 60 yards receiving and a huge touchdown on the last drive on fourth and goal. Shotgun for San Francisco here. Up by one. Stepping back is Garoppolo. Throws. He's got his man. It's Samuel again to the 34. And a big play there by uh, the other... Is that... Is that another Samuel? Whatever. Samuel has been a huge player in this game. And he has been a, 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 an incredible game-changing performance so far. Single back backfield. And they fake the handoff again. Lots of pass plays. And he's got his man again. And it's Emmanuel Sanders. And in Sanders we do trust. 24 more yards added on. As the clock continues to tick to about five and a half to go. Well, I, I didn't e exactly agree with this what, uh, this uh, game plan. I thought for sure they would start running the football. But here, another empty formation now for San Francisco. Looking. Doesn't have enough time. No, he throws. He's got Kittle to the five. And the clock is going to tick inside of five minutes in the fourth quarter. A touchdown here would not put the game away, but it would be a huge... It would be the first nail in the coffin. Of course, only an eight-point game would still be a one-possession game, so it would only be one nail in the coffin rather than completely uh, closing it off. But that was a well-run screenplay, but Sorensen gets the tackle there as he was able to read it at the last minute as Coleman gets the catch there and that is going to bring up third down and three from the three they can get the first down marker inside the the one as there is the yellow line for an opportunity at a new set of downs I formation here they hand the football off he's got it does he get enough is that going to be enough for the first down no fourth and inches from just inside the one. Any closer and you'd be in the end zone, basically. And I will... Are they actually going to kick the field goal here? Yes, they will. Under 3.30 to go in the fourth quarter. They'll watch the clock tick down to 10 seconds. And they'll kick the field goal to go up by 4. 25-21. And... Once they got that safety, everything changed. I mean, really, the second half in general. 25 unanswered points by San Francisco since being down 21-0. to zero. And with three and a half, I mean, if any team, again, can do it, it's Kansas City. We've, saw, we've seen it. Their first touchdown of the game was like a 70-yard pass to Tyree Kill. They can 100% score just a really quick touchdown. But the question is, will they? Can San Francisco hold them off long enough? Three minutes and 24 seconds for Kansas City to try and drive down the field. And once again, keeping McCall Hardman from being able to return kicks is definitely something you want to be able to do. And they have done it to perfection in this game. As now Kansas City's offense heads back out onto the field. And one, like I said at the beginning, this is the story Kansas City's offense versus San Francisco's defense. And so far, San Francisco's defense has come out on the better end. Even, even after such a dismal opening start of the game. And another sack. It's Buckner again. The secondary has been so good. And that is another coverage sack. Second and 20. As Buckner gets in the end zone, look at the time. He had plenty of time in the pocket. Plenty of time. But he just couldn't find anybody open, nor could he get to the outside and run with the football. Stepping out is, once again, Patty Mahomes. And he throws. He's got a man deep. And he's got Tyree Kill. Past the 35 to the 32-yard line. And that is what I said before, how quickly this game can change. A huge pitch and catch to Tyreek Hill deep. And he's 10 yards away from having a 200-yard game. 
as Patrick Mahomes throws a beautiful pass all the way downfield. And that was a bullet pass, too, by the way. That is how good he is at throwing the ball deep. As Nick Bosa came close, and a huge catch! Robinson! The two-minute warning hits as he catches it over the defender's shoulder. What a catch! First down and ten. Wow, this game has had its ups, its downs, and that catch right there was absolutely incredible by Robinson. And now the Chiefs have the ball in the red zone. But they need to get the ball into the end zone. But that is how you get it done inside the five first and goal. Williams. He has 73 yards on the ground in this game. Something I don't really think we'll see in reality, but he has been playing very well for Kansas City, and they've been able to catch him off guard. A minute and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Stepping back is Patrick Mahomes. Has time. It's Kelsey. Touchdown. And the Chiefs take the lead. 27-25 with a minute and 31 seconds to go. Wow. This game is wild. The booth will review the catch. And it's upheld. Kansas City leads. Pending the extra point to make it a three-point game. As now San Francisco's offense, the pressure is on them. A minute and 31 ticks to go off the clock. As here comes the PAT. And the kick is up. And it's good. 28-25. Kansas City leads. This game has been absolutely incredible. And now San Francisco. Jimmy Garoppolo has to make the plays to give this team the chance to win. A field goal would at least tie and send this game into overtime. How will this game end? The... There's so much tension in the air. I know this is a Madden simulation of what could be, but this is a very crazy game that we have seen as Kansas City's first touchdown of the second half comes at the perfect time. 28-25 with a minute and 31 seconds, and you've got to wonder about the AI, well, whether or not the time management will be good enough. As the return is beautiful, back to the 32-yard line for James Jr., and that is a very, very good punt return as he gets an extra seven yards from where he would have been if he had let the ball bounce into the end zone. As Jimmy Garoppolo will send this offense out with a minute and 27 seconds. And a field goal will tie the game. And that's kind of what I want to see, honestly. I want to see what this game could do if we go into overtime. Stepping back is Jimmy Garoppolo. Looking, has time, throws, and it's incomplete, almost intercepted, and that would have sealed the game. But instead, it falls to the ground, second and ten. This offense has been so good in the second half, but like I said before, how long could you keep Kansas City out of the end zone and it wasn't long enough? Garoppolo, single back, backfield. Looking, has time, throws. Incomplete. Tyron Matthew, the Honey Badger, in on the deflection. A minute and 19 ticks have to go off the clock here. This is a huge, huge opportunity here for all of these teams, all of these players, as a single back backfield for San Francisco. Looking. Throws. He's got the first down. Past the 45. And now we'll probably take down to a minute and one second before the timeout, I assume. As Bourne gets the catch. Two, one. No, they don't call the timeout. So maybe it's only a first half thing. As the no huddle here. They're going to try and get as much the, as they can go. Hopefully the AI does well because we saw that Seahawks-Packers game end in a rough way. But there is a sack as Wilson gets to the quarterback. This is where I'd use a timeout. You've got 40 seconds to tick off the clock. Where is your timeouts? What are you doing? Don't call a timeout now that you've wasted this much time. Okay, in the no huddle. And now they call it... 
they could have saved so much time if they didn't call a timeout right there. So this is what I was talking about. So it's 31 seconds in the second half, I suppose. But uh, that was awful, and uh, that could very well cost them the game, in fact. But we'll see. San Francisco, if they make a very deep pass here, they can make something happen. We've seen it earlier in this game with Emmanuel Sanders, as well as Samuel. Stepping back is Garoppolo. Looking, needs space. He throws as he's hit, and he got it. Did he get out of bounds? No, they call a timeout with uh, 25 seconds on the clock. But that is a very good play. And they needed that at the 46. They need to get into field goal range here. They cannot kick a field goal from this deep. They have to get in field goal range to potentially win the game. Well, I'll tie the game and force overtime. And they very well could do that here. In the shotgun is San Francisco. Stepping back, Garoppolo throws. He's got a man. First down and he gets out of bounds. At the 42-yard line. You couldn't ask for much better than that as Emmanuel Sanders gets out of bounds. He has 87 yards receiving. He has been a very important factor into this game. He could have got a little bit more out of that one, but instead he plays it safe. Single back backfield for San Francisco. First and 10. They hand the football off. Why? I don't know. Will they try a 60-yard field goal or what? That was, a, that was the worst call you possibly could have made in that situation. As someone who is just wants to see this game extend, the, the excitement has been crazy, but the AI in this game is absolutely horrendous. They hand the football off, and now they're going to throw the football, and if he gets tackled inbounds, the game is over. Stepping back is Garoppolo. Looking, throws. He's got a man. Get out of bounds, get out of bounds, get out of bounds, get out of bounds. And steady stays 100% in bounds, and that is the game. The Kansas City Chiefs have won the Super Bowl, and they have done it. Andy Reid finally gets his name in the books as Super Bowl champions. As the confetti rains down here in Miami as... There it is. The Kansas City Chiefs are Super Bowl champions. And I will say I would have liked this game to be a little bit more exciting there at the end. Um, you know, I wanted to see that San Francisco not mess it up. Handing the football off. I, I still can't believe we saw that in that situation. You weren't in field goal range to begin with. There's no way, even if you got a decent chunk of yards, that you would have been able to to be in a good situation. You've got to throw the ball in that situation. And they ran the football. So the fourth down and goal score, it, it didn't turn out to be the difference. I thought for sure that fourth down conversion would have changed the entire course of the game. But Tyreek Hill wins player of the game. Nine catches, 190 yards, three touchdowns. An average of 21 yards per touch, and I will say that is entirely possible to have happen. Well, San Francisco's defense is good. The speed of those receivers on Kansas City could very well be the difference in this game. As there you see Patrick Mahomes, Kansas City, and this entire team be able to lift the Lombardi Trophy and win the Super Bowl and the Madden cover. Not going to curse Patty Mahomes this time, will it? But there you go. The Super Bowl is over. Thank you guys so much for all the support on this series. It's been amazing. The, the entire playoff run, so many exciting moments, so many crazy moments. You know, we saw, you know, Dalvin Cook come out with 292 yards on the ground in that, in that simulation game against San Francisco. You know, we saw so many crazy things happen. San Francisco is 0-3 in our simulations, even though they have an 88 overall team. I don't know what it is about this my specific game and not liking San Francisco, but the 49ers haven't won a single one of my simulations to this point. Um, that game was absolutely wild, though. The second half was incredible. If you guys did like this video, I'd highly recommend hitting the like button, subscribing, and go, I would, please, go check out 
the zero overall Madden franchise mode. I put a lot of hard work into editing that series, and I feel like it was a lot of fun to 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 do. Uh, I'm still, you know, recording episodes, and it, it's just so exciting to see. And if you guys do have any suggestions, do you guys want to see me try and win the Super Bowl with the worst overall quarterback? Uh, you know, undrafted quarterback. A couple of people have done those type of series. Do you guys want me, you know, to do a? I had another idea while I was recording this video to potentially be a coach and to, um, you know, try and lead a team to the Super Bowl. And if I win the Super Bowl, then I have to coach a different team and pick up whatever they have and try and make it to the Super Bowl with that team. And, and I'd pr probably make it a rule that I have to pick the lowest overall team and try and make it and, and also try and not get fired, you know, because... That would be incredibly uh, disappointing if that were the case. You know, there's so many different options that we could do for this series. Um, you know, do you guys want to actually see me do a, a career mode? I'd probably be like a wide receiver or something. But I didn't really like how it turned out the first time. So you guys have to give me a few suggestions there. But thank you guys so much again for all the support. I do really do appreciate it. And we'll see you all in the zero overall Madden franchise season.